We all have a feeling Peyton Ramsey will be your top guy. What can you tell us? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to comment on the depth chart. That's really left up to Coach Fitz, but I will tell you all the guys are working really hard. I'm very happy with the room in general. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of experience, you know, on our roster and then obviously the addition of Peyton. Uh, those guys have been been outstanding as it relates to learning the offense and, and uh, applying themselves and working hard and being leaders for the entire unit and, and then for the entire team. So I'm really happy with, with the quarterback room in general. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to going out there next Saturday with that group and playing. Okay, reminder to message uh, Athletic Communications in the chat for a question. And uh, when you ask your question, please let Coach know what media outlet you are from. So, Claire, you have two questions. Go ahead. Hi, yeah, Claire Kwana from Inside and You. Um, so what has it been like watching TJ overcome his injury and how has his return impacted your new offense? Well, he's been fun to watch work. Uh, I, I tell you what, I've been impressed as heck. Uh, obviously, with his mental acumen, he stayed in it the entire time he was he was limited from a health standpoint. Uh, he stayed in it mentally and, and um, same thing was vocal in meetings and and supported the other quarterbacks who were taking the reps uh, in, in a very positive manner. Uh, he, he's really sharp and, and um, you know, ha has a good knack and, and savvy for the game. So uh, his instincts are really good. Um, but I'll tell you what, just from, uh, from the standpoint of watching a guy overcome uh, adversity, it, it's been uh, inspirational, I think, to the entire quarterback room and, and his other teammates. Um, so I, I've enjoyed being around him, uh, love his attitude. And, and here's a guy who, who's really determined um, to make an impact. Yeah, and sorry, I have a follow-up question as well. How would you describe his presence in the quarterback room this well, offseason and com this coming season? Sure, again, as a veteran who, who's been around for a while and, and been around football all his life, um, you know, he's a guy that, that a lot of his teammates, not just the quarterbacks, look to for leadership. And, and, and so, um, you know, he, 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 that's not easy. It's not easy when, when you, you're, you're taking a backseat because of, of injury. But, um, but boy, uh, you know, his, his presence is outstanding amongst all his teammates. They respect the heck out of him for, uh, for how he's attacked every challenge he's faced. And, and um, not, not just in the quarterback room, but the offense in general, I think. Uh, sees him as the type of guy that um, that they can all go to and can all lean on. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Coach. I'm Ella Brockway from the Daily Northwestern. Um, when we talked to Coach Fitz last week, he said that you guys were, um, I guess, getting there in the physical level. How would you assess, like, the physical level that your guys are at right now in terms of preparation for being a week or so out from the season starting? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with where we are. Uh, you know, it's been a process, process unlike any other. Um, you know, it, it's been such a strange year. Uh, but as a testament to the job, uh, our, our strength and conditioning staff has done uh, and the vision that Coach Fitz has, has laid out, um, I feel like our guys are prepared from a, from a physical standpoint, both in terms of the physicality of the game, the conditioning, uh, the physicality of the game and the conditioning, because – uh, that, that, that's been hard to manage. Um, you know, you, you, you're, you're trying to get the necessary reps needed to get in shape. Uh, at the same time, you're limited from a time standpoint with the 20 hour rule because, you know, because school's in session. So it's not your traditional training camp. Uh, so I, I feel like, um, you know, between the sports science and, and, and just the overall knowledge of, of our strength and conditioning staff, they've been on top of it since day one, uh, back when we weren't playing even, and, and, you know, didn't know when we would be playing till now. Uh, we, we've ramped them up gradually to a point where uh, I, I feel confident that we'll be game ready when, when it comes to the physical part of it, both the physicality of, of the actual game and the condition part of it. Dave Bennett. Hey, Coach. Uh, Dave Bennett, WGN Radio. How do you evaluate the development of your tight ends and, and how important are they to, to what you want to do? Yeah, they're, they're, that's a group that's come along, um, you know, uh, I'm happy with, with that group too. Uh, as I, as experience has indicated, you can never have enough of those guys because that, that is, it's a very physical position that, that does get dinged up at, at different times throughout the year. And I don't care, uh, whether that's in the NFL or at other colleges I've been at. Um, so you got to have good depth there. I like 
I really like our young guys. I, I, I like the uh, John Rain has been doing a good job. Um, you know, pretty pretty dynamic in in all aspects of the game. Um, and and the veterans, you know, they, they they've played some football too. So uh, I'm happy with how they're coming along, and and uh, we'll, we'll utilize them in different different positions um, and different personnel groups. So uh, we do we just got to keep bringing them along and making sure, you know, that that's always a position where where guys are thrust onto the field earlier than, than anyone anticipated. Uh, but I think we have uh, some talented young tight ends that, that, um, that, that, that like everyone else are, are, are getting to a point where they are game ready and, and ready to, to show what they have on the field. Louis. Hey coach, uh, Louis Vicare with wildcatreport.com. Uh, I was going to ask about the tight ends when Mr. Ennett stole my question. So um, I, I'll, I'll go a little bit bigger picture, you know, a week and a half, um, before the season, what would you say is, is your offense's greatest strength that you're most confident about? And what are you most concerned about heading into the season? Hmm, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, number one, and, and this is, this is again, the foundation that was laid long before I ever stepped foot on this campus. You know, th this is, um, a foundation that coach Fitz believes in and, and I've always uh, thought of as very important and that is the idea that we are going to play hard uh, physical football I mean we're going to play with great effort and play with great physicality and and I think that's a strength you know and, and our guys uh, that that was that was refreshing for me when I got here to know that 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 culture already existed and and um, you know then we could just build upon it because it, it, it is it's got to be a strength I don't care um, who you are, that, that's always a, a difference maker in a game. And, and so that's number one. I, I feel confident in that, um, you know, in relation to your other question, uh, the, the biggest question mark is, is obviously, um, I, I feel good about where our team is mentally in terms of grasping the offense, uh, but we've yet to do it um, versus many uh, in, in live situations. You know, we had limited time in spring practice and that was you know, March, I think 12th was our last day of spring practice. Uh, and, and the contact piece of it has been limited throughout training camp. So, um, you know, as per Big Ten rules and, and just the calendar. So uh, th that's the biggest question mark. Again, I feel confident our guys will go out and, and, and um, execute that part of the game. Uh, but you're always wondering as it relates to, to um, the speed of the game um, is much faster on game day and, and the physicality of the game, obviously, that, that we've, we haven't had a chance to, to emulate and practice as, uh, as much as we would like to have. Um, the, you know, I feel good our guys will respond, but that's always going to be the big question, I think, for anybody going into the first game of the season in this particular calendar year. Thank you. Kevin Sweeney. Yeah, hi, uh, Kevin Sweeney from WNUR Sports. Uh, Coach, I'm, I'm curious about the time that you guys spent once the season was, was originally canceled, that maybe 40-day window. You know, what did you guys get done from an offensive installation standpoint? during that time that maybe prepared you better for training camp once that was eventually able to kick off? Um, you know, interestingly, I'll go back to March 12th when, when they canceled spring practice, the rest of spring practice. Um, and we were fortunate enough to get eight practices in. From an insulation standpoint, we, we were able to reinstall everything. It was actually a blessing in disguise um, because we, we could hit it again for a second time, and we had video evidence of us executing and exactly where we would need to improve and what we would need to work on. So having that video evidence, restalling it for, for a second time in great detail. I mean, we, we just, we had nothing but time. So we were able to go into greater detail, frankly, than, than I ever have before. That's what laid the foundation mentally for uh, how advanced our players are. I think besides the fact that we have extremely intelligent players who pick things up quickly, the extra time that we could spend in Zoom meetings um, and, and, you know, the NCAA allotted us eight hours a week and we, we took full advantage of that. That was critical. Now, fast forward to the summer, once the season, um, you know, was postponed uh, for, for me and the quarterbacks personally, our, our, our focus actually changed a little bit. Um, you know, we, we felt like we were in a really good spot mentally as it related to install. Uh, and, and so we focused as much as anything on, the physical, uh, the, the fundamentals, the physical and the fundamentals that, that are necessary to play the position, uh, the quarterback position. And, and we're able to dive into greater detail as it relates to technique and mechanics than frankly I ever had before in that realm. Also, you know, you're so limited during a season or during spring ball, or even the, the amount of time you can have with the players in the summer, it's so limited. 
that, you know, you get 15 minutes of individual in a practice and, you know, you're working every skill under the sun during that time. Well, when we, we had uh, quite a bit of time and, and really not a need for the, the schematic install, uh, we, we, we focused on the physical and, and really uh, dove into the, the depths of technique. And it was, I know I walked away um, from those conversations thinking that they were extremely valuable, uh, not only to our players, but to myself, I, I you know, I, I made it a conversation, a two-way conversation to hear, hear the things that they'd been taught in the past or they'd learned elsewhere, um, you know, focused on each individual guy and, and specifically what maybe he needed to improve upon. Um, and that was very valuable. Drew. Hi, Coach. Drew Schaff from the Daily Northwestern. Um, you mentioned guys like John Rain who have um, shown um, – great improvement in this training camp. Have there been any other players kind of throughout this training camp and summer session who have been playing well um, in preparation for the season? Sure. Um, you know, there, there's a, there's a guy, uh, one of the guys that pops in my head is Malik Washington. You know, here, here's a young guy um, who frankly is playing like a veteran right now. Uh, he, he's a guy uh, who has learned the offense very quickly uh, and, and who is performing at, um, at a high level right now. So, he really pops into my head as a guy, you know, obviously you have your veterans, uh, RCB and, and Riley and, um, you know, in, in the backfield, I, I think we have very good depth there with, with, um, with all those guys, Isaiah and Evan and Drake um, and the list goes on. Um, you know, those guys have played a lot of football, but, but Malik is one guy who, who, when I got here, I saw on video, uh, there wasn't a ton of clips on video from, from games last season, but you could tell he had a skill set that was, that was attractive uh, to me. Uh, to be able to utilize and sure enough as we've gone in the spring ball and now carried it over into um our modified training camp he, he's a guy that, that that has really um taken his game to a next level ben hi coach ben chasen from inside on you uh given the uh unusual per se off season uh how would you say first year players are adapting uh, to the college level and are there any that particularly stand out Sure. You, you know, I'll say that the mid-year guys, <laughs> again, not, um, not what you'd anticipate from a mid-year experience kind of enrolling in January. Um, I, I do think the, the spring and the time we were able to spend together post-spring was valuable for their ability to, um, to pick up the offense quickly and then to delay the, the, the onset of the season probably benefited those guys a little bit in that they could spend a little extra time learning the schemes and the techniques that the coaches are teaching and, and all those different things. So, um, you know, I, again, weird, uh, strange, strange year, uh, as, as it has fallen, but I think the young guys have benefited from pushing the season back for, for obvious reasons. Just they're given a little bit more time to grasp things. Hello. I'm curious, how would you personally describe your coaching style on game days as we approach the start of this new season? Well, you know, obviously I'm up in the, up in the box. Um, you know, getting the, the, you know, the bird's eye view of everything. So uh, I'm removed a little bit from the emotion of the game, um, which is how I'd prefer it. Uh, definitely want to want to think analytically about what we're seeing and what we're doing. Um, so I'd say that that is my primary approach on game day. Now, I, obviously, during the course of the week, when when I am out on the field um, in practice, it, it, uh, it's quite a bit different where um, you know, there, there, there's obviously quite quite a bit of teaching that goes into installing a game plan or installing an offense, uh, but you also got to be able to bring uh, bring bring the energy to, um, you know, to help facilitate the tempo that we're trying to to play the game with and the effort level that we're trying to play the game with. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, can we circle back? Hey, Coach, it's Teddy again from the Tribune. Um, you mentioned it with Malik, but are there any other game breakers? Any guys who've impressed you so far with fall camp? Because obviously what was so much lacking from this offense last year, among other things, was big plays. Who, who might be able to help you this year? Oh, sure. You know, um, boy, I, I'll, I'll go back, Teddy, and, and revisit the veterans, you know. Um, Riley Lees has played a lot of football and, and has a lot of flexibility to do a lot of different things. Um, Kyrick McGowan is a guy that, that I think is just an all around good football player. I mean, his instincts are outstanding and, and I think he's going to, he's going to provide playmaking, <clears throat> excuse me, 
provide playmaking ability for this offense. Uh, RCB, again, I haven't been here in the past, but Ramad is playing uh, as well as he's played since he's been here uh, from, from what I've been told. And, and I'm very happy with, with what he's bringing to the table. So, so those guys are doing a good job. Again, um, you know, the tight end position where, where, you know, we, we, we're trying to develop a, a stable of guys there. Uh, the running backs, you know, <clears throat> I know we played quite a few last year uh, at the running back position, um, but Isaiah Bowser, uh, he's playing some good football. Um, you know, uh, Evan Hull uh, has a speed aspect that's that's a little bit different. Drake Anderson is um, has some agility and and um, you know some some the ability to make people miss. So, and there's the, the running back room again. There, there's more guys in that room. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have playmakers. I I feel pretty good about that. Um, you know, now it's just a matter of finding the best ways to get them the ball to utilize. Uh, you know what they do well to utilize that the best way. And if I could follow up on something else, uh, Mel Tucker, what are the um, typical characteristics of his defenses? What kind of stuff would you expect in week one? Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you're playing Maryland. <laughs> I'm still thinking you're playing Michigan State. <laughs> you, got me. you rattled me for a second there. Um, exactly. I'm going on the old schedule. Never mind. We'll get to Mel later in the year. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. You know, I, I worked with John Hope for for uh, three years at with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, and. Uh, you know, I, I can tell you he's a good person now. He, he wasn't the coordinator in Tampa, and they seem a bit different schematically from what we were doing at Tampa during my time there. Um, but uh, I, I, like I said, he's a good person and a really good coach and good teacher. So I know he's going to have those guys playing at a very high level. Um, you know, they're, they're a, um, an odd-based defense, uh, odd personnel. Um, they, they will uh, bring some exotics and heat you up at different times. They will mix their coverages. They will play man coverage. So they do enough schematically uh, to keep you on your, on your toes um, from a personnel standpoint, they're returning a, a pretty darn good core of players. Uh, and, and even some players, they got two players in particular who were, who were really good um, starters for them back in the 2018 season and both missed last year. Okay. Now both those guys are, are returning. One of, one of them is the safety. Um, I believe it's Antoine Richardson. The other is uh, like what they call their Jack linebacker, Jack uh, Rush End, uh, I, number 30. I don't want to try to pronounce his last name. Um, those two guys are really good football players. So I feel like, um, yeah, they, they've graduated a couple at some different positions, but they're getting some reinforcements, not only reinforcements, but reinforcements with experience, you know? So, um, you know, they, they got a, a good core guys returning um, and, and uh, you know, they, they, they got good team speed. Uh, and like I said a second ago, they do enough schematically that they're gonna they're gonna keep you on the field. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, coach. All right. Thanks, guys.